Hello friends, uh, welcome to Databricks video tutorials. So in this video, I'm going to give you more information about Databricks workspace. So what is exactly Databricks workspace? And uh, what are the components will be there in uh, backend when it comes to Azure Databricks? So most of the people will be having the idea about a front end, like a Databricks workspace, where we can create a notebooks, okay? And uh, where we can create a clusters, where we can create a jobs, but when it comes to enterprise it's in the back end so what are the services will be there in azure front end you can see the workspace but back end what you can see exactly uh, where it is going to store where it is going to create uh, where it is going to create a clusters and uh, back end services so when you look at high level databricks workspace so databricks workspace divides into total three parts storage compute network like any resources in the cloud, any resources in cloud, storage, like where you are going to store the data, compute, nothing but you need a CPU, RAM for processing, and then network. So any uh, cloud service provider, they are going to provide infrastructure in a backend, cloud service infrastructure. So Databricks is a separate company, Azure is a different company, so they are providing in cloud-based network service and uh, compute service and storage service. So if you compare with all these things, Databricks and Azure. So uh, when you look at Azure uh, backside, okay, where it is going to use a network, storage and uh, compute. So compute part always remember cluster. Whenever you create a cluster, that will be always a compute part. Backend virtual machine will be there. I'll show you that. Then where it is going to store the data, where it is going to uh, communicate uh, which net kind of network it is using the front end when you log into the portal whenever you create a new workspace okay whenever you create a new workspace front end you will be creating notebooks you'll be creating a jobs you'll be creating a clusters and you'll be interacting with uh, any other services maybe azure services or any other services but the back end databricks creates first one resource group that is called managed resource group so whenever you create a cluster, first it will create a managed resource group. Under that workspace, whenever you create a workspace, right, it will create a separate resource group called managed resource group. Under that, first it will create one blob storage. And if, whenever you upload data, whenever you create a table, right, it needs some storage default location, that is, which you can access using a DBFS. So backend one blob storage will be there. It will create one blob storage for this workspace. It will create one virtual network. It will create one NSG rules and it will create another manage identity. Total four resources will be created for workspace. Let's create one workspace in Azure portal and see that in a backend. So just search Databricks. You'll get option called Azure Databricks. Once you click on this, create a new workspace. So I'm going to create a new resource group. New resource group. Inside this resource group, I'm going to create a new workspace, a Databricks workspace. So this is my workspace name. And choose the location data center. I'm going to choose East US. And uh, we, you can find the three kinds of uh, pricing ties. This is the trial, which you can use uh, 14 days. Standard without role-based access, and uh, you won't get uh, SQL analytics as well. Premium, you'll be getting a role-based access, and SQL analytics also you'll get. So I'll choose a premium. They just review and create. Just review and create. So once you review and create, so what will happen back end? So just click on create. Now it is going to create a Databricks workspace. So this is a community edition, right? Front end. Similarly, you will get that workspace in the back end resources will be available. The first resource it, it is going to create managed resource group. If you go to the all resources or you can search with the resource group name. You can search with a resource group name. And the lo location East US we have selected and uh, subscription 
only one subscription this is a resource group just now we created this is a resource group under this resource group it will create a workspace first inside that workspace it will create a separate resource group called separate resource group main is resource group even you can go to the all resources okay you can filter with a resource group yeah this one so this is the workspace now click on this and uh, it will create a separate resource group separate resource group and this is this main is resource group under this backend it will create a separate services or you can say resources so those resources are this blob storage which you can store all the data which you can access using a dbfs and the logs point of view, jobs point of view, backend it's need a storage in cloud, right? That is a blob storage. When virtual network, network security group rules, energy rules, and one managed identity it will create. For a role-based access control, managed identity it will create. Total four resources will create for workspace. Under this resource group, that is, Main is a resource group, it will create a blob storage, virtual network, energy rules. Then when these will be created, so those will be created only whenever you go with the clusters. Whenever you create a cluster, backend it will have a virtual missions. If you have a two node, master node, worker node, two virtual missions, IP address, public and private IP address, network interface, disk for that. Okay. First, let's verify that workspace resources. This is a refresh here. You can see manage identity is created, network security group rules it is created, and virtual network is created. Still in progress. Still in progress, you can see this. Still blob storage not yet created, it will be available. Blob storage also it's created. Four resources will be available in a backend, except a compute. Compute will be available only after creating a cluster, but a storage network is ready. So blob storage in a East US, the same data center location and uh, backend network security group rules, virtual network, manage identity. For role-based access, you can use this manage identity. Then go back to your workspace. You will get an option called, even you can refresh here. This is the resource inside this workspace resource. There's an option you see this launch workspace once you click on launch workspace so it is going to use the same username password that is a single sign on and you'll be getting a url a workspace id then uh, azure data bricks.net after your workspace id this is the workspace id okay now so this is enterprise edition. Now, whatever you create a notebooks here, whenever you upload the data, so everything is going to store into under this resource group, this storage. So this is a blob storage, which you can utilize, so not you can utilize, so Databricks can utilize this storage. Then if you want to add additional storages, then you can go with the creating a mount point or direct access. Okay. Now, now, if you create a cluster, if you create a compute, I think about a cluster, the backend resource will be created. I'm going to create a single node cluster just to show you that what are the resources will be created in backend. Now, if you create a cluster in a workspace, backend, it is going to create additional few more resources. These resources. These resources for workspace, these resources for cluster. So whenever you create a cluster, backend one virtual machine, two disks, public network, private network, IP address, and network interface. Okay? So public and private network interface and IP address and virtual mission and that virtual mission disk it will create. Now you see this. Okay? Just a refresh. And the default, when you go to uh, the workspace, SQL analytics will be there. That For that, yes. so if you go to SQL, you say this, Databricks SQL. 
So this serverless compute will be there. For that compute, backend one cluster will be there. So if you go to that SQL warehouses, you see this. So this is actually stopped default. If you delete this, backend resources will get deleted. It will take some time. It will take some time. Okay. And uh, you can go back to SQL. Uh, so currently we are in a SQL analytics. So instead of that, go, go to data science and data engineering and uh, compute. So we are creating a compute. For this compute backend, it is going to create a virtual machine. It is going to create uh, two disks. One for disk, uh, whenever you uh, jobs process, 256 GB disk SSD. One for operating system SSD. It will create two disks, one public IP address, one private IP address, network interface to communicate over the network. So those resources, you can go here and refresh. Just to refresh. Okay, so here, if you go there, this is a virtual mission, backend one resource, and uh, we selected that a RAM, uh, you see this at four virtual CPUs, cloud everything is a vCPUs, nothing but four threads you can run or four parallel process you can run. And default Databricks is using Linux Ubuntu OS operating system. And you can see the public IP address, private IP address, and even you can see the two disks it is created in backend. Those everything is a resource here only. If you go there, two disks, one is a scratch volume, another one is container root volume. So 128 GB SSD and uh, that disk performance also, which is input output operations per second, 500 input output, like 500 files, which you can read and write and bandwidth. How much bandwidth now this 100 MB per second bandwidth. Similarly, another disk container root volume, which is 256 GB. That is also SSD 1100 input output operations per second, 120 MB per second. So bandwidth and file operations, IVO, both you can see here. And again, you can see that network interface, public IP address, another network interface. This is a private network, public network. So this is a network interface. Uh, it is created uh, for that cluster. Okay, now, even if you go, go back to this, this is. Okay. So these all resources will be available for your compute for every node. If you have a two node, two nodes, every node virtual mission will be there like this, another virtual mission and that virtual mission uh, capacity and uh, two disk CPU, RAM and everything will be there. So just now cluster is available. You see this, this is the compute. It is available. You can open this compute and you can see this 14 GB RAM, four CPUs. Four CPUs is nothing but actually virtual CPUs here. Cloud everything is virtual CPUs. This is a Databricks runtime. Databricks runtime. And uh, so whenever you create a compute cluster, backend it will create virtual machine, two disk, one is a root volume. Another one is for internal operating system purpose, 128 GB, 256 GB, two disks it will be created, SSD, and network interface, public address, okay? Public uh, and private network interface and public and private IP addresses. So these resources for clusters, these resources for workspace. Whenever you remove your cluster, these resources will get deleted. Whenever you remove workspace, these resources will get deleted. That's why whenever you create a notebook, that notebook is going to create and store inside a workspace, this block storage. So you don't need to worry about if you remove cluster, you don't need to worry about your tables, you don't need to worry about your metadata because cluster resources are different, your workspace resources are different. So whenever you remove cluster, still you can find your notebooks, your tables, your data, so this is not depending on compute. Only if you want to use this data, this data, if you want to, if you want to read data, write data, right? That time you need a compute. Otherwise, these workspace resources are different from your computer resources. So infrastructure as a service in a cloud, 
So Databricks is going to use the network compute storage. These are three services it is going to utilize. And the backend, they are going to store virtual machines, disk, and network interfaces. So these all things it is using that. So that's about all the resources. All the resources. So these resources related to workspace. Then compute resources. Okay, compute resources. Now, if you remove cluster, those will get deleted. If you remove cluster, it will take a four to five to ten minutes. It will take minimum five to ten minutes. Remove these resources. Okay, so this is about Databricks workspace backend services. Databricks workspace backend services. Okay, see you in another video. Thank you.